Today, we're going to get into some examples of resilience because we all talk about it. That is important, when, especially when there's been so much chaos, so much craziness in our world. But what does it look like? So let's take a look at what uh, makes a difference in this. And that way you've got some examples in terms of things that you can do, things you can strive towards to be more resilient with all the changes that are happening to you. I'm Ravi Tangri, and this is the Soul Engineering Series. And this is about how you bring more heart and soul into your work, into your home, into your community, into every part of your life uh, to live more fully and purposefully. And resilience isn't just about surviving tough times. It's about thriving and living purposefully, living meaningfully. And there's a journey that we can go on. And that's what these videos are out about. Thank you for the sharing the videos and spreading the word. Really, really appreciate it. And the likes. And also for your comments so that I know what's working for you and what you need more of as we move forward. <laughs> What does it look like to be resilient? Um, what, what are some examples of it? It's, it's funny, the way that I encountered resilience a few years ago that really sticks in my mind isn't about personal resilience, but it really helps shape my understanding of it. I did a lot of work with the Red Cross and their disaster management group. And they talk about community resilience, which is after a disaster hits a communities like a forest fire or um, you know some sort of an accident, chemical spill, whatever, what does it take for them to get back and recover from that? that that's community resilience. And personal resilience, as we've talked about, is your capacity to recover from difficult events events in life and really as I've shared with you the core of that comes to something called personal power which is your perceived sense of control over yourself and what's happening around you it's not the actual control it's your perception and that's what makes a difference and that's what you'll see is a difference in some of these examples I'm going to show you is that these people, um, some of them, my, my own examples, uh, have a different perception on how much control they have. And so that's causing their resilience to either be high or not so high. And that affects a lot of the, um, the challenges that come out of that. So let's take a look at one of the first things, uh, one of the key traits of resilience is emotional regulation and you may have noticed with the challenging times we've had recently that people are a lot more sensitive that they they you know that you can set them off a lot more easily i know that uh, there are some buttons that i have that um can be challenged i have uh, one of the things i don't like is when you get caught up in the bureaucracy and it can you know there are times in my life when that's been incredibly frustrating when you feel very helpless with it but when you're dealing with someone uh on the phone for example or on a video call you're getting support on something that person isn't the one who's created those problems for you they are just doing their jobs and it's not a great time to blow your stack at them you know what we need to do is if we are really angry really upset and I, i've done this in the past when when i've had that is i avoid those calls at that time and i really do my personal work to be able to work through those emotions and that that is work then that takes time 
so that I can go into those calls a lot more resourcefully. And I have to be a lot more resourceful because probably in that call, some of the barriers that I've found may pop up again. But the interesting thing I found is the more I do to manage my own emotions, the more effectively uh, those conversations go and, and, and the more smoothly that they go. So where are times when you know, you, you need to avoid, and it's not even directly in conversations, in emails. Someone sends you an email that sets you off. Do you respond right away? No, that's a time to walk away from the desk. And we say, oh, we don't have time. We've got, you know what? When these things blow up and you have all this tension with all these people, you got lots of time to sort out all of that problem. But then you say you don't have the time to deal with it up front. No not true we if we can ma manage this and invest what we need to manage our emotions and get the support get training you need get ca get counseling support if you need whatever it is the more effective you can be okay and that's one of the keys to, you know things that 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 really tends to pop up when 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 the, those triggers are right there how do you Manage yourself so you can regulate your emotions a whole lot more. Now, another thing is accepting what is. Uh, I mean, when the pandemic hit, it's interesting in my community, the speakers and and uh, trainers, facilitators, I think it was March 11th, uh, every meeting in the world was canceled because the global pandemic got declared. And that just kept going and going and going. And there were some people that were, no, no, I, I, I speak in person. I've got to do this. And honestly, I was that way too. I would have said, I'm pro you know, I do a lot of my work in facilitation. And it's like, no, I got to be with the people to do this. Uh, but if this is what it is, okay, how do we move forward? And in the, course of the next few months, I created new processes and have found new technologies that enabled me to do what uh, I did in person, almost all of it online. Uh, and it came to accepting, okay, it doesn't matter how much we think it should be different. Uh, you know, I've, I found a lot of the People in my industry were maybe a little slower because they weren't used to working online. I had already done some stuff there. And I moved very quickly uh, into creating an online conference on actually resilience uh, with, uh, with four other speakers that I know. And, and doing it not just as a freebie, which is what everyone did because they didn't know how to do it, but we actually charged for this. We got sponsors and we made it work. But it came to saying, okay, this is the way the world is. How do we move forward? Where are opportunities? You bring in those problem solving skills to do that. So that's another thing that um, the more you can accept, it doesn't matter how much we want it to be different. This is the way it is. So how do we deal with it? We can pound our head against the brick wall forever uh, until it really, really hurts. Or we can say, this is the way it is. Let's move forward. How do we deal with it and bring in the problem-solving skills? Here's another thing. Self-awareness and self-care. Self-awareness is about how can you look at yourself and see, be aware of what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, where, where you're coping, where you're not. Sometimes we're not great at this, but this is where it's great to have a friend, you know, the use your lifeline, call a friend and, and talk things through, a friend who can tell you the honest truth. If you're, you know, if you're not seeing something, they can tell you who, wake up, this is happening, you're not paying attention. And this helps us expand our self-awareness. I mean, this is a huge journey. And self-care is really important. This is maybe where I'll expand on this a bit. For me, 
Again, go back to when the pandemic started. My big passion, a big part of my self-care, my joy that feeds me, that nourishes me, is dance. I, I do many styles, salsa, West Coast Swing, and so on. But with the virus, going out and holding hands with 20 or 30 people in the night is not a good thing. And so that disappeared. Poof, like that, overnight. And that was a blow and I felt it add on top of that the isolation and so on that you had uh, but I knew that if I just sat at home and got stuck in that I would just it would just be a downward spiral so I looked at, okay what else is it that nourishes me that feeds me and one of the things is nature particularly uh, water I'm lucky to live by you know, uh, within a half an hour, an hour's drive of about eight amazing beaches. So I started, I think that first summer, I was doing beach walks almost every day. Um, and that was a lifeline for me to be able to breathe and to be able to uh, nourish myself, look after myself, to give myself the resources to move forward. But I had to be aware of that pressure I was feeling with losing the contact of people, losing all the other norms to be able to do that. So I had to make sure I looked after me so I could do all of the other stuff. And here's the challenge is for a lot of people, particularly those I found who listen to the, these videos, you look after everybody else in your life. You look after people at work, you look after people at home, in your community, friends. Last person is yourself. No. You have to fill your well. And I'm very much an advocate of first person in your life should be you so that you've got more to give to others, to support others. And that's a whole nother conversation, but please feel free to reach out to me about that. So, you know, in terms of self-care, what do you do? It doesn't have to be huge. You can start with a few minutes a day to give yourself some space, some breathing room to be able to move forward and then the final thing is social connection and support i'll go back again to the beginning of the pandemic a lot of people all of a sudden we lost that first lockdown lost all contact with people that weren't in our immediate household um and for some it it was isolating alone for some it was isolating with families which created other stresses because people are going to work and going to school at home and whole new learnings there but we lost all of that connection with other people uh and all we had again this is accepting what is all we had was uh video in a lot of case and that's where zoom really exploded so one of the things again I go back to what I did is I made sure I stayed in touch with people friends all around the world not just locally with video calls with phone calls I couldn't physically be with them um, but I made sure that I was connecting with them, not necessarily to do anything, a sort of anything, but just to have that talking stuff through. And it made all the difference in the world. So, you know, it's, it's making sure whatever the situation is around you, that you're not isolating yourself. Because the moment you isolate yourself and don't have those connections, you start on a downward spiral. The other thing is it's not just friends and family, it's support, it's reaching out for support you need, coaching, counseling, whatever is required. Um, we're not superhuman. We all need support moving forward. So that's, uh, those are some of the, some examples of where resilience can, can look a little bit different, can make your life look a little different. In terms of the support, I want to let you know about a key piece of support that I'm offering this month, this February. Uh, it's a seven day ramp up your resilience challenge, uh, that is totally free for you, your friends, your family, people you work with, 
please feel free to pass on the word. Just go to rampupresilience.com and sign up for free. And we are going to spend seven days bringing you some key powerful nuggets to help you ramp up your resilience.